think Facebook is live and Instagram's live. Yay! Okay, so I have both going on. So if I look at random places, that's why. Um, hello, happy Friday, everyone. Um, I'm excited. I have an engagement shoot tonight, so I'm looking really forward to it. Um, but yeah, so this is basically me talking about um, wedding ceremonies and some things to kind of keep in mind. Um, and a small medium disclaimer, um, all of this is coming from a wedding photographer's perspective. Um, so keep that in mind as I talk about it. Um, these are the things that I think about, especially when I'm photographing um, ceremonies. And let me get my notes up really, really quick. There we go, perfect. Um, so yeah, these are all with a wedding photographer. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, that being said, the first thing that I wanna talk about is lighting during your ceremony, which again, there's the disclaimer. Um, Lighting is a ginormous part of your wedding ceremony. Uh, whether there's too much light, not enough light, crazy shadow light. Um, my biggest, biggest uh, tip, if you are trying to decide what time to have your ceremony, um, is to go to your venue um, and see what it looks like. Go to the venue kind of in the same season and the same time that you're thinking about um, and see what it looks like, basically. If you cannot make it there, uh, I would definitely, there are free, there are some free apps, you can pay for them as well, but there are free apps that will show you the sun's trajectory at the place that you are. Um, you can type in this very specific date and it'll tell you, yeah, oh, you know, the sun's gonna be here. Um, and you could even, you hold up your phone and you look around and it shows you where it's going to be. Super helpful app for me, um, especially when I am at a new place that I've never been to and I don't know where the sun is going to set necessarily and if there's going to be trees and all that kind of stuff. Um, so look up one of those apps. I, can, I need to look up which one I use, but I always forget. It's new to me, so I always forget what it's called. Um, but yeah, think about lighting for your ceremonies. My first tip is try to minimize backlit ceremonies. Um, and what I mean by this, and I actually set up this live very specifically, um, because I am pretty backlit right now. Um, backlit basically means all of the light or majority of the light is coming from behind you, um, like this big window right here. Thankfully, I have a ginormous window in front of me, but if I didn't, my face would be black, but that would be really beautiful in all the full light. See if I move. There it goes. Look at that. Um, try to minimize backlit ceremonies. Cameras have come a really long way. They're able to compensate a lot of different lighting situations like this, but they'll never be able to perfectly expose everything like our eyeballs can. Um, nature's amazing and we can see all different exposure levels, but backlit ceremonies are not going to look, they're not going to translate in photos as well as they are in real life. Um, I have had a, a couple people kind of be surprised by that. Uh, there's a couple ways that photographers can compensate for this. Either you incorporate flash, um, which I have definitely done. There have been a couple of ceremonies where I'm like, I, I have to use flash if you want it to look how you want it. Um, the only problem with flash sometimes is that your ceremony or your venue <coughs> churches do not allow you to use flash during the ceremony, which is fine because it can be a distraction every now and then um, if you're just constantly going. But um, if it's an outdoor ceremony or someplace where they're not as stringent, your photographer will probably have to use flash um, if, they, if they know how. But, but yeah, so try to minimize backlit ceremonies. Um, either you can turn which way, and this all is, keep this in mind. Another disclaimer, um, this is all venue specific as well. You can look at these while you're venue shopping um, and be thinking about it, but all of this is very venue specific and what venue you chose to have your wedding at. Um, I'm gonna move on, hold on, let me scroll down on my notes, make sure I covered everything there. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so if you are um, having a ceremony inside or at a place that has kind of low lighting, I said abysmal, but low lighting to kind of not much light at all, consider renting lighting equipment to provide light. Um, number one, your guests will thank you because they'll be able to see you a lot better. Um, but number two, and even if you just rent light and just have it on the, al the altar area where you will be saying I do and all the action will be happening, um, consider renting lighting to make it 
beautiful. Uh, if you watch, and there's a very super specific example of this. If you watch Prince William and Duchess Kate's wedding, I've, I have watched it on YouTube, the whole thing. I watched the whole thing on YouTube and there's brief moments where you can see the vast amount of lighting that they brought in to that very dark church. Um, I can guarantee you that church, gorgeous, but <laughs> without that lighting, it's, it's pretty dark uh, for the most part. Um, and if you look at their ceremony, it's flawless. All the lighting looks gorgeous because they brought in lights. Um, so that is something to consider if you have a really dark ceremony, if you're having a night ceremony, um, or if, <laughs> like this happened to us, if the um, daylight savings happened and you didn't quite realize it, <laughs> That has, I will admit, that's happened to me. Um, and then the ceremony ends up being at night, uh, which for me is not a problem because I just bring in my own flash. But uh, for guests, it was, it was pretty dark. Um, so you might consider renting some lighting equipment and um, providing some extra light to make your pictures even better. Let me scroll down just a little bit. Also, so if you're having a ceremony outside, um, another thing that kind of involves lighting is to look for areas, and this kind of combines the backlight a little bit but if you're having a ceremony outside look for areas that are fully shaded whether they're under a ginormous tree um, or under an awning I don't know um, look for fully shaded areas um, shaded very consistent lighting like my face right now is very consistent there's no weird shadows going on um, look for areas that will provide that for you and again if you're like I don't know where the sun's gonna set just pull up your app or get there at the time that you're thinking about having your ceremony um, and bring a couple friends and have them stand up there and look at it and be like, oh, that's so pretty. Um, yeah, bring your bridal party. Bring your, bring your bridesmaids and have them stand up there. They'll love it. Um, sorry, I was making sure I didn't have any questions. Uh, yeah, if y'all have any questions, feel free to, um, to go ahead and post them. Uh, let me make sure I cover everything there. Yep. So, next point is the background. Um, and this is, you know, the backdrop of your wedding ceremony images, but also think about where people are going to be coming from and going to. So basically when everyone is processing into the ceremony, where they will be in the ceremony, and then when they'll recess out and what will be in, the, in those photos. Um, this has happened a couple times, not, not a whole, whole lot, but people um, will be processing into the ceremony and there's like a trash can, just like a little old trash can that's sitting just at the end of the aisle or just off somewhere that it's like, if we could just move that. Um, exit signs are also another one. Um, or cars, if it's an outdoor ceremony, if you can just move the cars. Um, but this is something that you can do at your rehearsal. If you stand where, like at the very front row um, and look and if you're like, okay, it looks clear back there, that's perfect. Um, there won't be any trash cans, exit signs, cars, um, any doors that can be closed. Um, I've had that where there's like one random door <laughs> just open. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Um, but yeah, keep in mind the background is uber important, uh, especially while people are walking in and walking out, because uh, those are generally the really fun ones, because they're either they're trying not to cry or they're trying not to fall, bridesmaids in dresses and heels um, or they're having a ball and they're just waving at everybody uh, there is a very variable amount of what people are doing um, and those photos are actually really really fun to look through because um, as a bride and groom you're not necessarily going to see their face as they're walking up and down the groom maybe but um, the bride doesn't know that they're like stiff and like please don't fall please don't fall you can see in their face that they're like don't trip don't trip <laughs> Um, so anyways, so look at the background, look at the background of your ceremony space, also look at the background of where people are walking in and out. That's it. Um, next is signage. So you have to imagine, and this is for ceremony, reception, everything. You have to imagine that your sweet little wedding guests who have all the best intentions of the world are little lost sheep and have no idea what to do. It happens no matter how many weddings they've been to. They get there and they're like, I don't know. What's the next thing? Do they, have we done the ceremony? No, no, where, where is that? They have no idea. They have no idea this vision that you've been planning for months and months and months. Um, they're just showing up and they're super, super excited. Um, so signage is super important for your ceremony um, and even just reception after the ceremony, but just in general. 
Um, your wedding guests generally don't want to commit a faux pas and kind of do something silly where they were like, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to do that. Um, again, signs help a lot. What really helps, um, and I've, this has happened in the past couple seasons, not, not often, but um, guests don't know necessarily the, I want to say procedure, um, of where to sit during the ceremony. Uh, typically the front row or the front two rows or whatever are reserved for family and there's generally reserved signs but for some reason wedding guests are <laughs> they're scared to sit closer um, so they will sit further and further back and then there's going to be like this ha this happened recently where there were like three or four rows that were empty in the very front um, and actually about five minutes before the ceremony I told the um, I told some of the guests, I was like, hey, um, how do y'all feel about scooting up? Like, y'all are perfectly fine to scoot forward. Um, no one's going to be sitting here. Um, and if you sit this far back, it's going to look like their ceremony was empty in their photos. And we really don't want that. So why don't we just scoot up like four rows? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, sure. Um, because they just had no idea. So even if you just put a little thing in your program or even just a little, bit, a little sign that's like, hey, Please crowd us in the front. Come on up. Don't we won't bite that hard. It's fine. Um, but yeah, well, let me make sure I covered everything there. Yep. Yeah, and even if you put on your program, um, you know, go ahead and go after the ceremony. Enjoy refreshments downstairs, upstairs, wherever the cocktail is going to be. Cocktail hour is going to be. Um, you just kind of let them know where to go. But kind of jumping off of signage. This is another one that I really hope continues to catch on and continues to be much more prominent is an unplugged wedding. Um, if you don't know what that is, I am gonna be publishing a blog post about just ceremonies in general, but I'm gonna be publishing a blog post probably this afternoon. Um, and there's a video in it about an unplugged wedding. And it is the best video that I have seen that accurately describes what an unplugged wedding is, should be, why you should do it, and it's hysterical. Um, but anyways, the, in summary, an unplugged wedding is basically where you're asking your guests to enjoy your ceremony the old-fashioned way, which is just with their eyeballs um, and being present in the moment and putting their phones away, um, kind of letting them know, and this is where signage comes in, putting a sign up that, hey, uh, we have spent quite a bit of money paying for this really good photographer who are literally doing all of the photography so that you do not have to. Um, that just that sign right there and like hey put your phone put your phones down and enjoy it with us um, there I can't even tell you most of most of the ceremonies on like what should I say plugged ceremonies um, they will just have there's always this just the phone right here and it's like oh that was Aunt Susie but I uh, can't see her face anymore because her phone is there anyways moving on to that um, next thing to think about is utilizing your officiant um, to make announcements to, again, announce an unplugged wedding. If they, didn't, if they can't read, which most people don't read anymore, so utilize your officiant to say, hey, uh, put your phones away, enjoy it, be, in the, be present in the moment, be intentional with this. Um, typically, your officiant has a microphone on and can make announcements like, hey, Thank you so much for coming. Um, cocktail hour is down the hall, uh, or we will meet you at the venue, and it's called XYZ. Um, you know, we will have dinner there and dancing and, and stay as long as you like. Um, they're really, really helpful. Oh, they're also helpful uh, for making announcements that the family to stay behind so that we can do family, for, family photos. Um, usually, I will make sure that the officiant announces that because for whatever reason even if you tell the family like hey we're doing if you tell them like the day before the wedding hey we're doing uh photos right after the ceremony somehow they forget and they always wander off again little lost sheep oh hey melissa oh my goodness um sorry i got distracted so going off of what the officiant he usually has a microphone um and this is something microphones our necessity doesn't matter where your ceremony is it especially applies if you're having a ceremony outside um, especially especially applies like you need to have a microphone I can't even tell you how many ceremonies that they're like oh you know we'll just talk 
our officiant's loud. We'll just talk really, really loud. I'm sorry, you're nervous. You're not gonna talk loud. Your idea is like, I do. And not, no one can tell what you're saying. Um, like literally about half the weddings that I photographed that don't have microphones, I couldn't tell you what's going on. The only reason I know what's going on is because I've read the program, I have talked with a couple and I know the order of ceremony, so I know clues on what's happening, but your guests can't hear you. They're there to hear, <laughs> they're there to hear you basically say I do. Um, and if I can't hear it, then your guests definitely can't hear it. And that kind of is a bummer for them that they came all this way and they can't hear anything. Um, you basically don't want to hear your guests be like, oh, everything looks so pretty. Uh, yeah, it was beautiful. Um, you, wanna, you want them to be like, I loved how you chose to have the symbol of, uh, symbolism of tying a three-stranded rope together. I absolutely loved that. I love that you did that. Um, if they, can't, they can't hear it if you don't have a microphone. That's it. Um, so this next one, I have proposed at different weddings. And some people get, I don't know. It's, it's breaking a bit of a tradition, which I love it. I did it at my wedding, um, and I think it's a great decision, but, you know, I'm biased. Basically, what it is, is um, flip-flopping where you're standing from your parents. Does that make sense? Um, so say a couple, bride is over here, groom is over here, having their parent opposite of them so that they can see your face the entire time. Um, I, know, I kind of understand it, but I don't understand why everyone sits on the same side because then your parents are literally looking at your back the entire time. Um, and I'm sure they love their new child-in-law, um, but they love you way, way more, and they always will. Um, and I, I know my mama and my husband's mama loved that they could see our face throughout the entire ceremony and loved that we're sitting there like just like panic stricken. They loved seeing that face. <laughs> Even though I was, I was like, please don't, don't say something stupid. Don't do a stupid face. Keep a smile. That was me. I overanalyze everything. But, um, I had the recently at my nephew's wedding, uh, there were 25 people in attendance, which was amazing. But, um, we did this at their wedding so that my sister could see her son's face. Um, and my new niece-in-law, uh, her mama could see her face the whole time. Um, and I think they really appreciated that. Uh, so this is something that I have recommended a few times, but some people get like, ah, oh, it's different. It's not tradition. But I think it's really, really beneficial. I also think it's really logical, but I'm a super logical person. So keep that in mind. Um, one more tip that I haven't seen a lot, and I'm really hoping that it picks up in popularity because it used to be popular kind of, I feel like back in the 90s. Um, is a receiving line. Hey, Ashley. Oh my goodness. And hi, Amanda. It is a good idea, Amanda. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, receiving line is super, super helpful. Um, it does take some time. So you do need to plan in your timeline for a receiving line, but, um, oh my gosh, Ashley's the cutest. Um, sorry, I got distracted. Um, receiving line is basically where the couple, and usually it's the people that are host, hosting the wedding, um, they basically stand there and every guest comes through and says hello, greets them, um, and it gives the bride and groom a chance to be like, thank you so much for coming. I really, really appreciate it. Um, there are multiple benefits to this. Uh, the main benefit is you could probably go enjoy your cocktail hour after that. Um, you could you would actually say, hello and thank you to every single guest that comes to your wedding. Not every guest is gonna go to your reception, uh, either extenu extenuating circumstances or whatever. Um, sometimes they just can't make it to the reception. They're feeling sick that day, they have kids at home, whatever. Um, but having a receiving line, especially right after the ceremony, gives you a chance to actually see them and be like, oh yeah, they did come, didn't they? I forgot about that. Um, so yeah, receiving line, super beneficial. Let me bring up my notes because I moved it. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Um, now, receiving line doesn't necessarily consist of long conversations. It's more just like greeting, thanking, like, oh, you're awesome. I've missed you so much. We need to see each other. I better see you on the dance floor. That is generally what it consists of. Um, there are a couple times that you can do a receiving line. Um, the first one is as your guests exit the ceremony space. Uh, you're basically at the exit preventing them from escaping and, and basically saying like, 
Hello, thank you for coming. I love you. Enjoy the reception. Let's go get food. Um, there's also, the second part is also you can greet them as they come into the reception space or cocktail hour. Um, and again, this is kind of only possible if you do a first look um, and get all the photos done before the ceremony. If you have not done that, then you, you, it's, <laughs> you need to do a first look then. If you're gonna do it then. Um, but that's also really nice. One thing, if you're doing it when they're walking in the reception venue or cocktail hour, make sure you have a server going around um, passing out drinks and, and food. Uh, especially since there's literally a receiving line, so people are standing in line. Um, kind of keeps them, food and beverage keeps people happy for a lot longer than you think. Um, so the third, third time that you can do it, and this is like, if you're that person that's like, I hate every wedding tradition ever, I want to change everything about my wedding, you could, and I've never seen this done because it's crazy, but you could do a receiving line as people enter your uh, ceremony, before the ceremony. But that's if you're crazy and you want to change every tradition. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> so the final tip that I have, um, or at least from me, I have one that a bride sent me that I thought was a really good idea. So the last tip, and this is like the most photographer centric, the f like this is just coming from me basically, is when you recess out of your wedding ceremony, recess to a well lit area best part of a wedding to me, for me, uh, my favorite part is not necessarily when the groom sees his bride coming down the aisle or it's when they say I do. It is when they walk up the aisle, they actually leave that ceremony space and I can physically see them breathe the sigh of relief that it's over, that they're married, it's legal, it's done, and it's just a party afterwards. Um, usually 90% of the time it involves tears, which are happy tears, but I love the tear photos. Um, but <laughs> this is when all of the gold, the unscripted magic happens. But the sad part is most of the time, the couple recesses to pretty much a closet that has no windows, no lighting, and it's dark and dingy. I don't understand it, but um, it's usually a closet. That's why I say closet, or a bathroom, uh, which again, blows my mind, but because that moment is the most special to me, but. Nonetheless, um, when you are thinking about this and you're thinking like, oh, when we are done, like, where do we go when we're done? Um, number one, you can go wherever you want. Keep that in mind. But number two, go to some place that it has, has some pretty lighting. Um, you can go out if you're not already outside, if you're at a church. I've had a lot of church weddings, which is why it's on my mind. Um, go outside. Enjoy it. Um, and it's also really fun when your wedding party and your family catch up to you and everyone just starts screaming and yelling because they're so excited. Um, but yeah, recess to a place that is pretty well lit. Um, and again, this is the most photographer selfish request uh, <laughs> that I could possibly do in here. Um, but yeah, it's, you'll love the, those photos. Um, and a lot of times I can deliver way more when they're outside or when they're in like a room that actually has one window and not a room that is legitimately a closet. Um, anyways, let me make sure I covered everything. Yep, yep, yep. Um, yeah, because in those photos, you're gonna remember how you felt. Um, and that feeling is a very, very, I think, hey, okay. <laughs> I think my Instagram live like crashed for a second because it said poor connection. Um, so the final tip that I had from um, a bride of mine, actually she sent it in. She uh, recommended that when you're looking for a venue space um, and when you're like venue shopping, be prepared and, and look around. Be prepared for to spend and splurge a little bit more at a venue that you don't necessarily have to dress up as much, um, one that is already beautiful. So basically be willing to splurge a little bit more on your venue um, where you don't have to spend that money on florals to make it pretty if that makes any sense. Um, and I thought that was a really, really good tip um, because I, and I don't know why I thought of it because I did that for my wedding, but um, I got married at a garden because I wanted a garden wedding and I didn't want to build a garden. So, um, so yeah, anything else? I think that's really it. Um, but like I said, I'm gonna be pu publishing a blog post that has all of this written out, probably much more eloquently than what I said, but um, yeah, happy weddings, y'all. I'm so excited. I can't wait for uh, my fall season coming up. Uh, I got my first one in August next month, so it's going to be awesome. But y'all have a wonderful rest of your day. 
and happy weekend. I keep forgetting it's Friday, but bye y'all. Let me end it.